Mmm. Mmm. Oh, oh, oh. I thought munching the orange straight with the peel might not be too bad, but that was, that was actually gross. And now there's orange juice all over me. Ugh. What is up everyone, Mustache Orange here, back with another Pokemon Sword and Shield discussion video. So far we've taken a look at the reveal trailer for Generation 8 and broke down the starter Pokemon of the Gala region, but today we're going to be taking a look at the Gala region itself, the map of the region, which I've heard some people criticize already for being a bit too linear looking and maybe not as big as they had been hoping for, but today we're going to break down all the towns, cities, routes, and other locations that we're going to be visiting in the Gala region region and kind of lay down the path that we'll be following once we finally get to play these generation 8 games so without further ado let's just jump into it so first off is the fact that this region is clearly based on the UK with the maps being almost exactly the same when compared side by side and some people have even gone farther and flipped the map of the UK upside down which makes it even look more like the Galar region especially when we take a look at the northernmost and the biggest city of Galar which has clearly got some inspiration from London having things like the Big Ben, the London Eye and even Piccadilly Circus. Trust me I had to do some research research for this because I barely knew anything about London before starting this video but the city is very clearly based on London however the location is a little weird because it is on the very north part of the Galar map and in the real life version London is on the southern part of the UK so some people have said that maybe the map is flipped upside down and it makes even more sense when you go to the south of the Galar region and you get to the hometown of our player character which would place it at about Scotland on the real life map a lot of people People from the UK have said that this does kind of match with how the countryside is uh, where Scotland is toward the north and I guess it's more kind of like a country slash hillside so Galar might actually be an upside down version of the UK but then where does that leave Ireland? That is a question for later on in the video as some people have speculated that this might not be all of the Galar region exactly but we do have a lot to break down for now so let's dig in and start off with the first town that we see in the trailer the player starting town and it is all the way at the south of the Galar region map I guess it would be somewhere in northern UK in real life but we're not really going to compare it anymore to the real life UK this is Pokemon this is Galar let's break it down now we don't know the name of this first town yet but we can tell that our player will start their adventure right here seems to be the player's house and i know the buildings may be a little bit disproportionate but don't worry about that one thing that i've noticed about these games is the map doesn't exactly match one to one with the actual in-game city so even though you might only see three or four buildings here on the map in the actual game it might be a lot bigger as we see a couple of buildings in the town including a pokemon center that we definitely don't see here uh, on the map so right next to the player's house is this big old mansion with the uh, little spinning bird Pokemon Bane I'm not sure if that's Fletchling but it's definitely some bird Pokemon and we can notice on the map here that there is actually a little battlefield as well as a pond next to the house and I'm not exactly sure what's up with that it could be like a trainer school or maybe like our rivals house all we know is there's definitely a battle going down here and judging by how this is so early in the game it will probably be our very first battle maybe with our rival or against uh, wild Pokemon right after we get our uh, starter of course but where do we get our starter Pokemon where could the professor's lab be well right down the path uh, from the player's house we get to the first town and there's this big purple building which of course has a pokeball sign on top of the door and usually these pokeball signs are reserved for pokemon centers or some type of professional pokemon establishment such as the professor's lab and i'm not exactly sure if this is going to be it but if you notice this window over here kind of greenhouse extending from the house it looks a lot like one of the screenshots where the girl trainer is kind of behind this library and there's like a glass dome and I'm pretty sure that is the professor's lab, so most likely this is going to be it right at the beginning town. You may not have noticed there's actually a branching path here from the player's house. If we go to the right, you get to whatever this house is, but if we go to the left, we actually enter a little path that goes into 
a spooky, misty forest. The forest doesn't really seem to lead anywhere, but we have seen in the trailer a couple of clips of this foggy, mysterious forest, so it could be an area that we go early on into, maybe even where we get our starter Pokemon, maybe where we meet the professor and he's like, yo, you can't be out here in the forest all alone, bro. Here, take this rabbit. Moving along, uh, we do see a train station also in this town. I'm assuming we're not going to be able to access it right from the beginning, but probably once we head across this bridge here and we have what I believe is Route 2, and we actually do get to see our trainer get into one of their first battles here, right in front of the purple building that this path is leading over to. Now, eventually we will get to this second big purple building, which also looks like a professor's lab, so I'm not exactly sure what this building could be, uh, but we do see there's a battlefield out side of it as well as uh, this kind of glass dome here so it looks very similar to the other purple building that we see here back at the first town uh, however this one does have the pokeball in the front and this one doesn't so I'm leaning more towards the professor's lab being back at the first town and this maybe being some kind of trainer school or just some type of character that's important in the story that you have to visit in order to progress basically because I don't know it's another dead end so clearly we have to go there for some reason and then probably backtrack and make our way to the first town to take the train and that's got to be the only option because there's no other paths leading out of the village except for the train tracks that go into this mountain over here so maybe after you go and do whatever story mission at that purple house uh, they'll give you the train ticket or access to the train and we'll be able to move along probably over to this train station up here uh, but it could also I guess keep going all the way through the mountain and end up kind of like over here but if we keep following these train tracks eventually they lead all the way to the big steampunk city which I feel like would be a little bit early it could be a possibility though I guess Lumio City was pretty early on in X and Y I think you only had about two gym badges or something but more likely we're gonna end up at this train station circled here and that would mean that the next path is actually into this marsh slash lake area I don't know if you guys have noticed already but there doesn't really seem to be a clear path after this I mean you could end up circling around the lakes and end at this kind of castle tower over here and eventually make your way into the big steampunk city but there do seem to be branching paths here because you could also just easily walk through and go straight into the city which would be way quicker than having to go all the way around but then you'd also miss out on this uh, destroyed castle tower thing. Plus there's areas to explore right over here, over here. There's a little island that we could possibly get to if we've got surf. So this area feels a lot more open than the usual Pokemon routes we're used to. And I'm wondering if maybe the path kind of splits or you get a choice at this point in the game, which would definitely be a switch up from previous Pokemon titles where they kind of give you a little flag and it's like, hey, you gotta go here, dude. You trying to go over here? Nope, there's something in the way. Just follow the little flag. I know hand-holding has been something that people have been complaining about more and more in the last few generations to the point where now they basically just take you to the next area as soon as you're done with the gym. And yes, it is convenient, but I also want to explore the region, you know, and there seems to be a lot to explore, at least in this lake area here. So I'm not exactly sure where we end up, uh, but clearly we've got to go through the marsh somehow and it seems no matter what we end up at the big steampunk city early on in the game so maybe similar to x and y where we get to lumio city very early on uh, but there's not all the different branching paths available right from the start now there is a path over here with a little bridge and you can kind of go under and eventually it leads you to the badlands up here uh, but i feel like we'll be blocked off early on in the game from accessing this as i mentioned and we'll probably be directed over to the city so we're here the big city all already and it seems there's actually about four paths that lead out of it and I'm gonna try to label them here sorry if my numbers are a little ugly but we've got I believe four paths leading out of the city here and if it's anything like Lumios my guess is that the right side of the city is gonna be blocked off somehow so these two paths over here uh, we're gonna get to later on and regardless of whether we arrive into the city by train or walking right through the front gates which seems more likely uh, we'll be leaving out of one way which is 
the left side over here. So let's take a deeper look and there's actually a building over here with some uh, chimneys, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that one. It kind of looks like a train yard, but going back to the map, uh, this little area here, I believe is where we see this trainer fighting Grubbin. It's not 100% certain, but it kind of looks geographically like this area and it does fit in with the theme of the area that we're moving on to next. That is after the glittering cave, because like I said, we end up getting into some sort of cave here and I'm assuming it exits out over here. We don't get to see the cave entrance or anything, but there is the path leading out of the mountain. And of course that will lead us into the first stadium or should I say second stadium because technically there is a stadium in the big steampunk city but we don't exactly know what type it's going to be or if it even specifies on a certain type because we're not really sure how these stadiums work just yet but there's definitely one in this city at least for now we'll consider that number one and now we're going to move on to the second stadium then which is over in this uh very geosenge reminiscent town over here uh, which does seem to have some Stonehenge or kind of like ancient rocks laying all over the place. Um, and I really like the aesthetic of this place with the hillside and the yellow grass. It's a vibe in this part of Galar, you know? Now, of course, we can tell this is a grass type stadium from the giant logo on top of it. And you can even see a Pokemon Center in this screenshot, which you actually can't see on the map. So this proves that the map isn't exactly one to one, although you might see three buildings here, there might actually be way more in the actual game, which I think is really cool because for the longest time I've wanted the Pokemon towns to feel like they're actually towns, you know, like they're lived in and big and there's a lot of people in it. Alola did a pretty good job, but now that we're on the Switch, we've got the full graphical power of a console, it's going to look amazing and I can't wait to see exactly how big the big cities of Galar are. One last thing to point out in this town is of course the giant uh, grass mural over here. I don't really know what it's called, but it is based off of the Cern Abbas giant, or at least that's what most people seem to be comparing it to. It looks a lot bigger than it probably really is here on the map, as in the game you can see it and unless it's like really far away, it doesn't look quite as menacing and gigantic, but it's cool nonetheless. And now we're moving out of this town. so. There's a path leading right over this bridge and over to this fancy looky building over here, which does seem to have an emblem at the top of the door as well. Not exactly sure what that emblem is, but there's like a little running path over here and like a pool and stuff. So most likely this will be the daycare center. It kind of reminds me of the Battle Maison too, at least the location that it was in Kalos. I don't know if they would bring back the Battle Maison or Chateau or whatever it was called, but the daycare most likely would return and this would actually make sense as a good location for it still early on in the game. Now we cross this bridge and we'll make our way to the next town, but I believe we actually get to see this bridge or at least a very similar looking bridge. Maybe this battle takes place somewhere around this time in the game. Either way, this route will lead us straight into the next town and the next stadium, which you can clearly tell, probably a water type stadium. I mean, the grass one had a big green symbol on it. This one even looks more blue than usual. It's right by the ocean. It's got the big blue symbol. So if this isn't a water stadium, I will be very confused, but pretty much 90% guaranteed that it will be. Uh, we can see some docks actually over here. Maybe we can take a boat in this town at some point because it doesn't seem like there's too many ways to actually exit this place unless we take another train up here or this tunnel leading into the mountain right over here. I think the tunnel is more likely because it'll lead us back down over to this area, which of course leads us back to the main big steampunk city. And maybe at this point is when we would actually take on the third stadium that is here inside of this city. If that was the case, my best guess is that the fire stadium is waiting for us here as this is a steampunk inspired city. And of course, steam comes from fire. You could say it might be a steel type stadium, but if the first other two are grass and water, then at least to me, it makes sense that the third stadium would be a fire type one. So let me actually start labeling these just so we don't forget. Uh, so far, we've got the grass stadium up here, the water stadium on the right, and at least I want to guess that the fire stadium would be the one located here in this city. We know there's a stadium, we just don't know what type it's going to be, but if I had to guess, it would be fire. 
Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we basically just did a giant circle and ended up back at the main city. So maybe the players actually get a choice in these games to where they want to go first. Like if you don't want to take on the fire type gym, you could go, you know, take on the grass one first or maybe even take the path over here and head to the water one first. Obviously, that would be way different from the Pokemon formula that we all know, and it most likely won't happen, but hey, an orange can dream, right? At this point, either you finally take a train out of this city and go on these blue tracks here, which I guess leads you all the way up over here. But after this tunnel, I don't really know where the train ends up stopping. Uh, perhaps there's a train station in this town or somewhere around. More likely is that now whatever barrier was stopping us here will let us through and we'll be able to proceed onward to the Badlands up here. And although there doesn't seem to be too much going on here at first, we do see this screenshot of Flygon and Braviary duking it out and it does pretty much match up with the broken down trees and stuff. After this area, we start to get into what I think is going to be my favorite part of these games, and that is this giant castle fortress. I mean, is it a city? Is it a castle? Is it a city in a castle? What's even crazier is the layout of this place. Once we get in here, we've got one, two, three different paths that we could take, and not to mention this giant crown building in the middle which does remind me a little bit of russia i know that it's like completely different region but i'm just gonna admit it i don't know anything about europe okay i'm just gonna show pictures and hope you guys know what i'm talking about but i can't be the only one that sees this castle and just thinks there's something bad about it like this is not a cheerful place at all i'm gonna try to move on from this city as quick as i can because i'm scared just being here right now but if you notice there's actually some regular buildings uh down here and here there's like a bigger building over here as well as like a smaller castle so this actual tower is humongous compared to like a regular building or compared to like a person in the Pokemon world so I could only imagine that this might be another stadium or maybe even the Pokemon League because you see this crown at the top here kind of looks like an arena so that could be a possible stadium or some major event is gonna go down in this city we just have no idea what that could be yet as we don't really have many story details uh, but you probably noticed on the left side over here there is a stadium or another battle arena as well as this peculiar looking tower here it kind of looks like the dragon head over here but golden I'm not sure if these are maybe decorations based off the legendary Pokemon like the actual sword and shield mascot legendaries which I'm sure we'll see revealed during the next trailer but they do kind of look like wolves heads a little bit more than dragons to me it would make sense that the people of Galar kind of worship these legendary wolves and maybe decorate their cities based off of them similar to how we've seen legendaries be revered in other Pokemon games either way this tower with the arena in front of it caught my attention the most because something is gonna go down here as well the point I'm trying to get at is there's got to be a stadium in this town and I'm not sure if it's this tower over here or the crown if Pokemon wants to stick to the formula of having eight gyms then there's got to be one in this town otherwise we're one short uh, but let's try to figure out where we're actually going next on our adventure because if we do enter the city from the main gate most likely we're not going to be heading into this castle right off the bat but we have a split in the path if we go off to the right we'll end up in the icy zone if we go to the left we'll end up in the rocky zone again it's unlikely that we're going to have a split in the path and most likely we're going to end up exiting out of the right side of this city over here and i'm purely basing that off the fact that we see a lot of the ice area in the trailers of the game and it seems like it's a little bit earlier on so perhaps the fourth stadium is actually over in the ice area which means that if we exit dragon land over here we have another split in the path oh my goodness what is up with all these forks so if we keep going straight we'll end up going through this tunnel and end up at this town over here which doesn't seem to have much going on for it i mean the only thing that really catches my eye is this roof here which kind of looks like solar panels or some type of weird technology that's being worked on so i think it's more likely that we end up taking this path instead and that'll lead us to this kind of maze over here i don't really know if we've seen this in the trailers or anything but it looks like a pretty cool area and once we beat that of course we get 
to the Ice City, which we have seen in the trailer. So I'll throw up a couple of screenshots of that now, and you'll see that it doesn't exactly match. At least in the trailers, it looks like it's a roundabout, but here on the map, it looks much more like a square and the fountain would be somewhere around here. But you can tell it's the same area clearly, and something weird I noticed about this place is there's a whole bunch of different flags. I don't know if it's a thing specific to this town, but we can see like a little tower, a flower, a crown, I believe, and I really don't know what's going on with that. It reminds me of the houses of Hogwarts, honestly. Maybe there's a wizard school in this town. I mean, there's a pretty big building right here. It looks kind of like a mausoleum or whatever, but the most important thing is there's clearly a stadium in this town. You can see it looks just like the other stadiums from before, but what type will this stadium be? Because if we're going by colors, at least, this looks a little too dark to be ice type, but obviously judging by the region that we're in, uh, anybody would say this is an ice type stadium no-brainer. So I'm just gonna, for now at least, label it as the ice type stadium, even though I feel like they might end up throwing a curveball here and giving us a type stadium that isn't based on like the region that it's in, but most likely it's gonna end up being ice. So you can see there's two entrances to the town depending on whether you come in from this side or this side, you know, you'll most likely leave out of the other ones so either way it ends up being full circle so let's just say we end up exiting out of here then we make it to this icy beach area i mean it's a little weird because it literally is a beach but there's all this ice everywhere so you think that the beach is going to be super cold and i don't know if you guys have ever tried to get in the beach water when it's cold but it is not fun so i cannot imagine anyone enjoying this beach Unless it's like one of those uh, hot spring things that I've seen are popular in like Iceland or I don't even know where, man. I would personally love it if you could choose whichever path you want. Like if I want to go over here before taking on the gym, that would be great. If I want to go take this on before the gym, that'd be great too. Just let me have the option of where I want to go and what type of Pokemon I want to build my team with. I think that is what Pokemon should be progressing towards. And I guess our expectations might be a little too high, but at least for how Odyssey and Breath of the Wild switched it up for those franchises, I was really hoping to see Pokemon at least try some new ideas here. And I mean, they did say they're gonna try to switch it up a little bit during the Direct. They didn't really show us too much, but they did say they're trying new things. So we'll just have to wait and see what those things are. I just noticed there's an exit to the north of the town, but I'm assuming we're not gonna be able to hit that up just yet as there's a couple of more towns and even a stadium over here. So let's just assume that uh, once we come back from the Ice Village, there's some kind of event going down here in this city. Perhaps we take on the arena over here or the tower at this point. I'm not sure, but it would make sense to take this tower on now uh, since we're gonna be exiting out of the west side of the city now. And you'll notice uh, this big gate over here, which Doug Trio is apparently the savior of the Galar region as they have these giant doors commemorating Diglett or Doug Trio possibly here. I mean, I guess it is Doug Trio. It's got, oh, why did I just? Whatever this is though, is probably the next area we're gonna be going through. And you can see a couple of patches of grass and eventually it leads over to another village here on the mountainside, which eventually takes us to the next stadium. Now, judging by the surroundings and also the color of the logo on top of the stadium, it's pretty obvious that it's gonna be a rock or ground type or possibly even a combination of both. We still don't know exactly how these stadiums work, but for now, I'm just gonna label it rock type. What really caught my eye is this thing up here. Let me just get rid of it real quick because once again, the path branches either to the left side around of the stadium and over here or to the right side leading into this creepy forest. But before we go into the forest, let's talk about whatever the heck this thing is. First glance, it reminds me of the altar of the sun or moon, like where we summoned the legendaries of Alola, just because it's a giant door with like paintings on it. I don't know if those are gears or like microorganisms, but you can clearly see the shape of a purple shield on here. Probably has to do something with the legendary Pokemon as well. Maybe even a sealed door holding back the legendary because it does look like a giant arch, kind of like a door and it does have gears on it, which means that we might have to figure out a way to turn those in order to get the door open, but we really don't know for now. So let's just follow the path now into 
the not so spooky forest over here and it looks like a dead end but if you scroll up you'll notice what the heck is this there's a whole fairy tale village hiding back here complete with giant mushrooms and like hansel and gretel's house or was it the witch's house that old lady was trying to eat some kids man welcome to the hidden village of the shroom where of course we've got yet another stadium and if this isn't a fairy type stadium then i have no idea what to think it definitely reminds me of uh lav lava what was that place even called lavier town from x and y with the uh pretty much similar aesthetic and it ended up having a fairy type gym there so most likely this will also be a fairy type gym, but if it wasn't for this path that clearly leads into the forest, I would say that this door actually is the entrance to the hidden magical village, because with all the colorfulness to it, I mean, it kind of looks like it would be a hidden village, right? Like, you see a giant rock face and you just walk right through it, just like how you get to Hogwarts. Oh gosh, we keep going back to Hogwarts jokes. Anyway, let's label our two newly found stadiums. So first, the rock stadium here, and let's just say fairy stadium. Uh, up here so I guess after this town you'd have to backtrack no matter what because there doesn't seem to be like a exit path to the north or like back over here so maybe this time we can finally challenge whatever's going on in this crown because we got to get through here somewhere and get to this tunnel so quick refresher we just explored this area up here did a loop-de-loop -loop, came back to the town explored this area over here did a loop-de-loop -loop, came back around and now we're going straight through why do I keep accidentally drawing di Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stadiums down. And if this right here is seven, then that would be perfect because the final stadium we're going to, the final city we're going to, is straight through the mountain. And you will notice another train station that we probably get dropped off at so that we can get through the final icy route another split in the path like what is what is even the point of this choose right or left it doesn't matter because here we are boys it's london time now if you had any doubts that this region is based on the uk this is literally london we've got the big ben over here on the left side of the town uh the london eye which is this crazy ferris wheel apparently one of the tallest ferris wheels ever and i can't believe the design of it like i actually really want to go to london now just to get or see some of these attractions brings back memories of a certain other ferris wheel in a long gone pokemon game and i really hope they have some kind of reference to it because i would love to get in this ferris wheel with a certain character that you guys may remember i was a huge fan of and i miss you down here we've got a town square which appears to be based on the piccadilly circus I didn't even know this thing existed like y'all really got your own Times square out there in london and everything huh honestly looks really cool the blend between technology and like the classical london you know and here in pokemon we've got that represented pretty well with the fountain in the middle and all the glow lcd signs up there so if there is a department store type of thing in these games most likely it's gonna be here in the final city which feels weird like is this actually the final city in the games and if it is, man, way to save the best for last, because look at this tower over here. I don't even know what's going on with it. I don't know if it's really based off of anything, but there is, of course, the Shard, very famous building in London. And even though it doesn't look exactly like this tower, I feel like that's kind of what Game Freak was going for with the inspiration. Maybe combined with this other tower that I found out is in London, but it doesn't really look too much like it, so... Most likely this is, you know, Game Freak's version of the shard. Not exactly it, but you know, a giant glass tower complete with an observation deck, which I'm sure is going to be important to the story somehow. Like there's no way we're not going to have an epic battle at the top of that dome or at least get to overlook the entire Galar region from up there. Man, how awesome would that be? We don't really know what this tower is for though, so let's just talk about what we do know, and that is this stadium over here, which you may notice is a little different looking to the other stadiums, but it does have that blue and red Pokeball symbol that we've seen on the other ones. It's not exactly the same design as the other symbol, but it does seem to represent the same thing, like the stadium battles are represented by that logo, I believe. Even though they're not exactly like Pokemon gyms, I feel like there's still eight of them them in the game so let's label this as one of them and by the way this is clearly supposed to reference the Wembley Stadium which is one of the most famous football stadiums in the world 
in the UK and although it doesn't look exactly like it, you can tell they have the same color scheme as well as that giant arch. So clearly Game Freak uh, took inspiration from that there as well. Proving this is basically London in Pokemon, and that is just so awesome. I can't imagine what you guys that actually live in London must be feeling like right now, because I know when Alola was announced, I was so happy, and I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm not even from Hawaii, but just the fact that we had a tropical region, like, that was so exciting for me growing up there, you know? So let's do an overview, and assuming that Wembley is the final stadium, I'm just gonna label it as the normal type stadium. Uh, so far, we've got one, two three, four, five, six, seven, and there's gotta be a stadium in the big center city. Like, unless they're actually breaking the formula, the magic number eight, you know, like there's always been eight gyms. There was eight trials, I believe, in the island challenge. So there's gotta be one more stadium guaranteed. And I'm just gonna take a guess right here that it is gonna be the one here in the big center city so i'll label that one steel for now just because we don't actually know if the stadiums are going to be type specific just yet but if i had to guess for this town and it's not a dragon type stadium then probably a steel type don't take the types too seriously because like i said we don't even know if each stadium is going to specify in a certain type but at least the locations of the stadiums i think are pretty accurate uh, which puts us at 8 now, and that is basically the entire Galar region right there. This does, however, leave us with a very important question, and that is, where the heck is the Pokemon League? The Elite Four, where's the Victory Road? What's going on? There's nothing really left to explore on the map here, and there's nothing left to the north either, aside from Ocean, so... Where could the Elite Four actually be? Hmm, now I'm thinking this big crown building here might actually be the Pokemon League? Could also be the tower, I mean it does have that circling glass pathway that you could kind of climb up, but I don't really know if that's how the tower works. It would remind me a lot of uh, whatever that tower you fight Ultra Necrozma on. Actually, it does remind me of that, how you kind of have to circle the glass walkway all the way up to the top. So I could see that being a thing. But the real truth, I think, lies back in the fact that this region is based on the UK. And if you guys remember all the way back at the beginning of the video, you might have noticed another landmass is also part of the UK. Where is Ireland? Where are my Irish boys at in the Pokemon world? Could there actually be an entire other island that the post game slash victory road takes place on? Seems like it could be at this point as there's not really any more areas left uh, to uncover here on the map. Aside from the train tracks all the way back at the beginning over here, not really sure where those end up leading over to, but that's actually where a lot of people have suspected that the Kalos region connects to Galar. Could this be the express train out of Galar and back to Kalos, or perhaps to the Pokemon League? Regardless, it's looking like we run into a dead end at some point, and if we've challenged all eight stadiums, what is next for us? What is the end game of Pokemon Sword and Shield? That is the question I will leave you guys with for now. Thank you so much for watching this map breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe this helps shed a little bit of light on these games and how they might not be as linear as some people are making them out to be. I definitely have more questions than answers at the end of this video, but Maybe that's what these discussions videos are really about and hopefully some of the things that we are predicting here do end up coming true because I think we can all agree that a more open Pokemon with more choices for the player would be a lot more fun and just bring more variety to every single team and just the experience of playing through the game. So in conclusion, this game might have a bit more open areas than previous ones, but the formula is definitely still there, as in we're going through defeating eight stadiums, and even if the formula remains the same, at the end of the day, Pokemon is all about the experience, and as long as the games are fun and look amazing, which so far they definitely do, I know the Galar region will be a blast to explore for the first time, so hopefully you guys are excited. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. That is it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Maybe you can tell how long this took, judging by how dark it got in this video. <laughs>